Hello and welcome to the video. Now today we're going to be looking at the quadratic formula and how it came about, how you derive it. So a quadratic equation is the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught and we want to solve for x. So there's different ways of doing it. In a previous video we looked at completing the square and Another way you can do it is the direct route. You just use the quadratic formula. Now, it may be given to you in an examination or you can just learn it off by heart. And then obviously if you don't know it or you get stuck, you can just always go back to the completing the square method. Now, the formula is here inside this pink box. X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then in the green box, I've written down the completing the square method again. So when you have a equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught, you transform it into the form x minus e all squared minus f equals naught. So that's the completing the square method, and that's the quadratic formula. Now to get this, we need to apply this. There's no other shortcut or there's no other way, way really to do it. This is very difficult to do in your head using just your own made up methods. This is the proven method for getting to here. So if a question says, given ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught, derive the quadratic formula. So you should be thinking immediately completing the square. That's the first thing you should be thinking about. Okay. Now, If you learn this form, that's not very difficult to memorize, is it? x minus e all squared minus f equals zero. If you can learn that, just memorize that or understand that, then you're on to a winner. It'll be very easy to answer these questions. Okay, so just if you know that, you're flying. So let's do that. Let's do what we did in the completing the square video. So what did I do? I took the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and I set that equal to x minus e squared minus f, right? Okay, great. The only problem is when we expand this out, we're gonna have an x squared term. Okay, but over here we've got an ax squared. We don't quite have x squared, do we? We've got ax squared. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of this a. Okay, well, the whole thing's equal to zero, so that's pretty easy to do. So we just divide across by a. So x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals zero. So there you go. Now we have an x squared term, which is what we're looking for, because it has to be similar to this. And that's equal to that. So now we're going to expand that out. So far, so good. Not, not too difficult. As I say, the only tricky thing was to make sure that you get rid of the a on the left-hand side. So you have to divide across by a. That's the first thing get it into this form where you have an x squared. Don't worry about the coefficient of x or the constant term. Getting, it looks as if it's getting a bit messy with the over a is appearing. Don't worry too much about that. Okay, so now we do what we did in the video on completing the square. We compare coefficients. Now we could do this directly. I'm cheating a little bit if you, well, I'm not really cheating, but I'm, I'm using a more what I'm doing is I'm doing it in a way which to make it easy for everyone to understand and learn. I mean, to go in and directly do this um, can be a bit tricky to understand. Um, so I'm not going to do it that way. Um, I'm doing it this way because I think this is the easiest and simplest way for people to learn it. Um, so yeah, so let's go and do that again. So we're now we're going to compare coefficients. And the coefficient of x, 
well, the coefficient of x squared, they're the same, so we don't need to worry about them because we've already got rid of the a. So the coefficient of x is b over a on this side and minus 2e over on this side. So write that down. So b over a equals minus 2e. Right? So that, so therefore, e is equal to b minus b over 2a. Okay? So you divide b over a divided by minus 2. So that's b over minus 2a, which is minus b over 2a. Right. So we've found e. Great. So now all we need to do is find f. So all that we have left are the constant terms. So the constant terms are e squared minus f over on this side and c over a on this side. Why are they the constant terms? Well, they're the constant terms because the x squared terms are pretty obvious. There they are there. The x terms, well, this one's b over a and this one's minus 2ex. So that's there. And then all that's left is c over a and then e squared minus f. So they have to be the constant terms because they're all that's left. So if you notice the order in which we did this, we started with the x squared term first. We made sure they were equal because we got rid of the a at the beginning. And then we worked our way down. Then we looked at the x terms. And now we've done that and we've found e. And now we're going to finally look at the constant terms to get f. Okay. So I'm going to use the full width of the board now for f. And then comparing the constant terms, we have c over a equals e squared minus f. Okay. So therefore, f is equal to e squared minus c over a because we just take f to the other side, take the c over a to the right hand side. Okay. Okay, now we know e is minus b over 2a. So f is equal to e squared minus c over a, which equals minus b over 2a all squared minus c over a, which equals b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. I'm just multiplying it all out. And that is equal to b squared over 4a squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. So what I've done is I've multiplied this term by 4a to get 4a squared. So I have to multiply the top bit by 4a to get minus 4ac. And that is just equal to, so we can, they've got a common denominator of 4a squared. Okay. So that was quite a lot of, a lot of writing there, but I was just doing it step by step just so you see what I was doing. So I didn't want to jump the gun in case you, you, you didn't understand it. Okay. So what we did was we found E first and we plugged that in to the ter constant term equation to get F in terms of A, B, and C. So E actually only depends on A and B. It doesn't even depend on C. E is in terms of B and A only. It's minus B over 2A. F, on the other hand, does involve C. It involves all three. It involves A, B, and C. Okay, but don't worry about that. Um, now, so we found E, we found F. So now we need to go back up here and plug them in here. So AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. So this thing here equals zero. So let's do that. So we have X minus E squared minus F equals zero. And then what does that mean? Well, now we plug in E and F, which we've just found. So X minus E, what's minus E? Well, E is minus B over 2A. So minus E is B over 2A. So plus B over 2A squared. And then minus F. Well, F is B squared minus 4AC all over 4A squared. 
So minus f is minus, I'll put a bracket just so I don't make any mistakes, mess up the signs. And that's equal to zero. Right. So I'm going to try and use the full width of the board, as I say. So I'll jump up here now. Um, but we're at this point now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this bit over to the right hand side because now we've got our x minus e squared and then we've got our minus f. So we take our f over to the right hand side now and then we take square roots and then we take this bit and take that over like we did in the other video. So let's do that. So that means that x plus b over 2a all squared is equal to b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay. So now we take square roots. So x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus, because when you take square root, remember, you have the positive and the negative answer. And we're taking the square root of that whole expression there. Notice it's b squared minus 4c all over 4a squared. So there's a 4a squared at the bottom, and we're taking the square root of the whole thing. Okay. Now, this can be simplified, but before I do that, I'm going to take the b over 2a out of this side and bring it over to this side. So therefore, x is equal to minus b over 2a. So I've taken it out of here and taken it over to the right-hand side. So it becomes negative plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now please note, be very careful, please note that this square root is for this whole expression here, which can be simplified. And that's equal to minus b over 2a plus or minus, and now I'm going to simplify this. And because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of the top bit, which is just square root b squared minus 4ac, take the square root of the bottom bit, which is 2a. Don't worry about the plus and minus on the 2a because we've already got the plus and minus here. So that takes care of that. Right, so we're nearly done. We've just one more little step to do. We want to get it looking like that. So we're almost done. So all we need to do now is combine the numerators because the denominators are the same now. We've got a common denominator of 2a. So com combine the numerators and we're done. So therefore, x equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over, so the whole thing, 2a, because we're combining this minus b and then this top part here, and then it's all over 2a. When you've got two fractions with a common denominator, you just add the numerators, and the denominator stays the same. And there we have it, guys. So that's our quadratic formula proven. We've derived it by completing the square. And that is identical to the one up here. Okay, so you might see in textbooks or in other videos or in online tutorials, it might be done differently than this. But I believe this method is quite simple for a beginner to understand. Because all you really need to do is remember this form here. x minus e all squared minus f equals zero. That's all you need to do. And then you need to compare it to the original form, 
you find E, you find F, and you plug them back in. To me, that couldn't be simpler. To me, that's a lot simpler than doing it the other ways. But as I say, everyone has their own way of doing it and understanding it. Now, technically speaking, I have completed the square on this, okay? Because I've, I've, I've written it in this form. It might not be identical to the way some textbooks or tutorials prove it, but it works, okay? It is still completing the square. So guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next video. Please like, share and subscribe.